Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Carl Ross of the University of Portsmouth, United Kingdom. Today is the 5th of July, 2015. I'm going to do a nonlinear analysis, including material and geometric nonlinearity, using the ANSYS shell shell Solch 190. Pick first the preferences. Structural. Okay. Prepressor. Preprocessor. Pre preprocessor. Element type. Add, add, delete. Add element. And we're going to pick on the solid shell. Solid shell. 190. Pick on that. Get that in there. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. And we'll get rid of that. We then pick on uh, material properties. Material models. Structural. Linear, elastic, isotropic. We put in the Young's modulus. It should be two E5 megapascals for steel, and a pass on the ratio 0.3. Put that in there, and then we do the nonlinear part of it. Because we're dealing with material and geometry and geometrical nonlinearity. Nonlinear, inelastic, rate independent. Isotropic hardening, meters plasticity, bilinear. We put in the yield stress. We put a yield stress of 300 megapascals, and the tangent modulus would make it a hundredth of the elastic modulus. So it'll be 2e3 megapascals. So we've got that in. It's fine. Come out of this. We're now going to make our modeling. The modeling. We pick on. Uh, Create volumes, cylinder, hollow cylinder. The origin of this is note, note. The radius, we make it 195, 195 millimeters. Outer radius, that is, that's the outer radius. Inner radius, 185 millimeters. The length, the depth, we make it 400 millimeters. We say OK. And then we've got a model. It's fine. We've got to uh, mesh it. Pick a plot control pan, zoom, rotate. Pick on ISO. And we pick on uh, meshing. Look for meshing. Where? There's meshing. Pick on a mesh tool, and we've got to pick on, this is a four-face element here, so we're going to have a six-face element, like a hexagon, so pick on hex, S um, sweep, sweep again, we sweep this here, we press apply, and there we've got our mesh, and that's fine, we've now got to uh, restrain it. So we pick on plot controls, pan zoom, rotate, pick on right, and I'm going to restrain it. I'm going to, so we go up here to solution, define loads, and then we're going to put apply, and we're going to put structural displacement on nodes, and we put box and we box the right side in there and make that but apply x y and z zero there x y x z x y x x u x u y u z red zero we then pick on box again we've got the left side we box this in here we make sure we don't go too far up the right or we'll restrain mid side nodes we supply we put all degrees of freedom there, a zero there, 
release your XY and your Z, press apply, and we've restrained it, and that's fine. We get rid of this. We'll now uh, put some pressure on. So once again, we pick on, we go in this here, we pick on the uh, um, defined loads, structural pressure. There's pressure there, and we're going to put it in on nodes. So we box this in here, and we're going to the the uh, eigenbuckling was 109 megapascals this vessel, so we put in a pressure here of plus 500 megapascals. 500. Let me say okay, that's fine. Now the pressure there, you've got to be careful of the direction of the pressure. So we pick on uh, plot controls and we pick on pan zoom rotate and we put front there. We take that view, you can see the pressure on the inside and the outside. We've got to get rid of the pressure from the inside. We've got plot controls, symbols, we pick on uh, face outlines, arrows, do that there. And there you are, you can see pressure on the inside and the outside, and we can't have that, we've got to get rid of the pressure from the inside. So we'd go to uh, delete, and we pick on uh, structural, and pick on pressure, and we pick on nodes, and we pick on circle, pick on circle there, and we pick off go from the inside here. Look out there, and we get rid of all those pressures there. So press on OK. We've got that. You can see there's only pressure on the outside only, and that's fine. We've now got to uh, do our analysis. So we pick on analysis, analysis type. Analysis type. New analysis, pick on static, OK that, pick on solution controls, and pick on large displacement analysis, pick on calculate pressure effects, program chosen, we can switch that on. Minimum number of sub steps 20, maximum 1000. So the number of sub steps is 20, maximum is 1000, is and the minimum is, what? is 1. So now we've got to write every sub step. So we pick on this and we look for write every sub step. Write every sub step, that's fine. That's fine there. We go to non-linear now and pick on program chosen. We switch that on and put here a thousand sub steps. That's fine. And then we press OK. And that's fine there. And now we've got to run it. So pick on solve current LS. Okay, and we're going to stop this now because it's going to take about five minutes to do the non-linear analysis. Right, we'll print the catch come on again. It's done it. It says that the elements are badly distorted, which is what you expected because it's gone through it's gone through geometrical and material non-linearity. So now we've got to look on the time history process. We look on general processor and we look on uh, read results. And we read on the last set, and we plot results, deform shape, deform and undeform shape. Okay. Oh, look at that. That's an interesting analysis. That's a money analysis, and that's fine. So now we go to the time history post processor. So pick on that, and we get the time history post processor. Pick on that, and we get this, and we pick on add data, degree of freedom solution. X component, 
Okay. And then we've got to move this out of the way. We've got to move this out of the way there and pick on an element. Now, but before we could do that, we've got to turn this back to uh, a decent shape. Let's pick on uh, right and we pick on the point there and we get rid of that and then we take this up here and press OK there and we bring this back here we bring it back there and we press on graph we move it out there and there we've got our money analysis and you can see they're just in the corner there it starts off horizontal and it slaps there so that's about 0 0.01 and we assumed 5 100 so it's point naught one so just there you can just see a flat bit there and it's just gone there it's point naught one times 500 which is 50 megapascals and that is the, the collapse pressure of this vessel including material and geometrical nonlinearity. thank you ladies and gentlemen just a correction ladies and gentlemen the dog's leg is point naught one times 500 so it's 5 megapascals, which is a good result. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye.